Thanks, Amber. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining our call today. Um, appreciate the time. We'll quickly run through our a knock and help desk offering this morning. So first and foremost, you know, being an MSP is really hard in today's landscape. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough staff to deliver the services. There's a constant increase in end user demand. Uh, the types of demands being sent over to us are getting larger and larger. The other components we run into are ensuring our staff is fully trained, making sure that they're keeping up to dates with product iterations, different product versions, we're constantly just putting out fires, not necessarily engaging our clients in a proactive manner, going out and selling new services. So it is very challenging and very reactive. The biggest key to competing that or battling that is learning how to scale the business. So how do we increase efficiency and create profitable solutions for our partners? The key to this is really outsourcing. Outsourcing traditionally has been frowned upon or not looked as, as beneficial as it would be if the services were delivered in-house. I completely beg to differ. You know, outsourcing allows you to grow your customer base and not necessarily grow your headcount internally. You're able to leverage a team, our team, to deliver proactive monitoring, create resolutions and programs for your clients that you may ne not necessarily have the time to build and deliver. So we're able to put in place programs for devices as well as the actual employees of your clients. Key things to consider to be able to do this are the Network Operations Center or the NOC and our help desk offering. What does this mean for you? Well, it means that you are able to eliminate the reactiveness of your business. So instead of putting out fires, you're able to respond in a proactive manner. You're able to engage with your client to grow the business, increase the stability of your relationship, and not focus so much on problem solving. You're able to put in a 24 seven team, which is our team to help support you and support your staff to be able to deliver a much more affordable uh, solution to your end users. So we have um, a large variety of services that are available to you. Uh, we're able to help customize those with you, free up your staff to go in and generate more project-based work, which in turn typically have more margin associated with them. So the initial component of uh, both facets of this, uh, including the knock and the help desk, is the onboarding period. So during the onboarding period, it is the initial 30 days of your agreement with us. Uh, within that first 30 days, we are gathering all of the necessary information for us to be able to support your client. So we look at um, all the devices that are contracted for us to manage, whether that's servers, workstations, and networking devices. Uh, we're also looking at uh, the end user data. So who the individuals are that we are delivering help desk services to, if we're engaged with that service, uh, what their roles are within the organization, uh, all of their contact information. And uh, there is an onboarding fee associated with that. Um, it is one month's worth of service. Uh, that we typically look at. So the onboarding period itself is 30 days. It can be extended or shortened depending on uh, the size of the engagement. So we set up for the onboarding period, it's set up in four, um, four or five meetings, as I mentioned. Um, the initial meeting will be to review the contract, make sure that we're all on the same page and determine what the expectations are. And then once we get the green light, we move on to the design and the installation of the services where our team is setting up everything, ensuring that the hardware gets agents, the users get access as they need to. Um, we set up the integrations with uh, the various PSA tools. We make sure that the workflow and the automation mechanisms are put in place correctly. 
And then we look at uh, the physical monitoring policies, making sure that all the access is configured correctly for the users. Um, you as the MSP will always have access to your client's environments through Managed Workplace. Uh, we will never uh, block you from accessing that. So you will always have full transparency and visibility on the policies that are put in place, the services that are being implemented. Uh, we do some testing in terms of the escalation processes as well. And then last but not least is when we ensure that we have all of the correct documentation for ticket flow. We document the escalation procedures. This is a very important component where we work with you to determine how we are to escalate specific tickets. So if, for example, you have a server that goes down in the middle of the night, how would you like us to handle that? Do we send an email? Do we call a specific individual within your organization? The same thing goes for help desk users. If they call, we're unable to resolve the issue for, for whatever reason. How do we engage your team as the MSP to help further resolve that if we need to? Uh, we also ensure all the documentation is available within our internal wiki that you have access to. And then we determine as a group collectively that we can go live and we continue to move forward. The NOC services. So first and foremost, this is one of our most popular service offerings that we have with our MSPs. Uh, this is a proactive a monitoring and management service. So this is all our team monitoring the infrastructure, making sure that things are up and stable and working and we engage you as the MSP. So we are outbound calling to you only and then you will engage with your partner from then on. We are a 27 operation. 24-7 operation, and uh, we operate 365 days a year. We have uh, two teams that deliver our NOC services. We have our, our premium or our onshore partner, and then we also have our standard and our offshore partner. So we have two different partners that deliver uh, both NOC services. The, the key differences are um, levels of service that are associated with that and price point. Uh, we can certainly get in that um, offline if we have specific scenarios that we want to look through, we can, um, but we separated them both. So onshore and offshore. Uh, within both uh, organizations, we deliver two levels of service. So we deliver, deliver level one, which is a response or monitoring service, and then a level two, which is, includes full remediation and complete management. I'm going to go into detail a little bit about what level one uh, response or monitoring means. So when we have devices that are set up under a level one type management, this is really where we're just monitoring those devices for you. So an alert will be triggered within Managed Workplace. Our team will ensure the validity of that alert. They will then perform uh, some remediation. Uh, the window is about 15 minutes. And if they're unable to resolve the issue within the initial 15 minutes, they will then escalate to you as the MSP to further troubleshoot and resolve. We will also provide um, the full RCA associated with that particular ticket so that you can continue working waste off of where we left off. The types of devices that I would always recommend putting on the level one are non-mission critical devices. Things like workstations, depending on the employee of course, um, UPSs, access points, printers, um, things that you know wouldn't necessarily impact the business on a grand scale if they weren't necessarily operational. Now, when we speak about level two type devices or fully managed, this is when we're getting into um, more complex management of those particular devices. So, uh, the same components apply for a level two. So, we ensure the validity of the alert. We start the root cause analysis, and then we're also responsible, in addition to that, to the full remediation of that ticket. So, we own this device from cradle to grave. Same thing with the tickets. From the time it opens to the time of resolution, that belongs to us. The other thing when we escalate to you, and escalations are typically minimal on L2 devices because of course we're responsible for that device. We escalate for two primary reasons. The first reason being we need physical boots on the ground. So we need someone to go in, replace a server, fix a drive, whatever it might be. Uh, we need to engage your team to send someone out on site to fix whatever the problem is. The second reason for escalation is a bit more subjective. Um, I always look at our relationship with you as the MSP as, you know, we own the technology and you own the business relationship. So we would want to collaborate 
and communicate with your team when something in the infrastructure is creating enough noise and enough problem that we feel it might impact the relationship or it might impact the business on a larger scale. So we would certainly want to work with you and say, you know, Mr. or Mrs. MSP, here's the recurring issue. For example, you know, we need to put in place a larger project for resolution. Let's work together. How should we handle this? How do we engage your partner and you as the MSP to make sure that we're all aligned on the same page? So that's really important to know is that it does really become a partnership uh, when we are working together. We want to make sure that, of course, we're honoring your commitments to your clients and, of course, you know, your commitments to us and our commitments to you. Um, the next big component of an L2 type managed device is that we own the patch management. So patching, as everyone knows, is a huge beast. Uh, takes up a lot of time. It's very complex and no one, everyone knows they have to do it. No one really wants to do it. So we own that. So we own um, all the Microsoft related patches and then third party applications. So the standard ones that are available, Java, Adobe, Google Chrome, Firefox, all of the uh, standard applications, we are responsible to ensure that those patches are done. Security, critical, and operational patches. We're responsible when the patching don't go through and we need to set up a new patch window. Um, we determine the maintenance windows for you and as well as the patch window during the onboarding process. So by the time we get here, we already know how we need to engage and what we need to do. Some of the um, other components that our NOC assists with is we deploy uh, the on-site manager or the device manager. These are the um, agents available within Managed Workplace, which is the Barracuda uh, RMM tool. Uh, the on-site manager acts as a network probe. The device manager is uh, the agent that we would put on a roaming device. Uh, so we deploy that within the environment for you as the MSP. Uh, we also configure all policies. So our NOC has a custom set of policies in which they deploy. Now, within Managed Workplace for specific devices and specific applications, um, as I mentioned, they gather all the end user data, names, roles, phone numbers, and then as well, uh, and most critical in this case is all the network information. So IP addresses of all the machines, all of the right data, you know, software versions, um, everything that you can think of that will be associated with the hardware. The biggest um, the biggest advantage to leveraging our NOC is that they have integrations with so many tool sets. So just off the top of my head right now, uh, we have integrations with um, Autotask, ConnectWise, TigerPaw, Salesforce, uh, Microsoft Dynamics, sort of the standard um, plethora of PSAs. We also have full integrations with IT Glue, uh, Power BI, as well as Tableau for more reporting functionality. Um, our team, our NOC team, uh, follows ITIL v3 processes, so they are fully aligned in terms of those metrics. Everything is completely, you can follow everything. Um, all of our staff have various certifications, whether they're Cisco specialists or they use Meraki firewalls or, um, you know, whatever it might be, uh, we have a wide range of certifications um, with our staff. And of course, um, and very important is that they're all background checked. So we have full background checks. We can provide additional information to that um, if required for any reason. Great. So as an MSP that is subscribed to our NOC services, uh, you all will get your own custom branded portal. So this here is an example of a partner that works with our NOC team and they have their own, their own portal. So as you can see, you see the individual who's logged into the portal on the top right. Uh, you have access to your own wiki. So the knowledge base here on the bottom left where you can access all documentation that's provided. You're able to support a ticket and to our team as well, you can get real-time ticket status, so you can see uh, what tickets are being worked on for who. And then, of course, if you need to engage our team for any reason, uh, you're able to do that as well through a remote session. So moving on to the secondary component of our offering, we have our help desk service. Our help desk service is a reactive uh, service and that it is end user driven. Your end user has a problem, they pick up the phone and then they would call our team. The help desk is offered as well, um, three different time offerings. The service delivery is the same. We break it down into hours of coverage. Um, there are 
four methods to access our team. So we have two reactive methods and then of course uh, two proactive ones where an, an end user would call us or they can send us a quick email or they can submit a web form or there's a chat agent that gets thrown on their desktop as well. So they can engage our team in whichever way they, they feel the most appropriate. Uh, each MSP will get their own custom DID number that's dedicated to them. So you will give your end user a specific number to call. They will call that and then they will get a hold of our team. Now we are completely agnostic in that we wouldn't be disclosing that you are leveraging an outsourced IT firm or knock and help desk. Um, we would answer simply help desk, we would then get the person's name. We would determine which organization they're coming from, you know, through the parent-child relationship, what that looks like, which the MSP, who's the organization, their role within that, and then the types of applications that they're using. Um, something else to note is, you know, if your client calls in and uh, they, you know, may not be signed up to the help desk service, but they're calling in anyway, uh, we would never turn them away. Uh, we would simply take the call, help them resolve whatever their issue was, and then the team would then let, you know, you know as the MSP or your um, sales rep here at Barracuda know that, hey, you know, this individual from your end user called in, they're not necessarily contracted. I just wanted to give you the heads up in case you as the MSP wanted to go in and, you know, let them know if they want to add more people, they certainly can. So we try to keep you as much in the loop with the communication between your MSP and our team as possible. So the three levels of service, as I mentioned previously, that are offered, we have standard hours, which are 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our extended hours, which are 6 a.m. to midnight, again, Eastern Standard Time, and then 24 seven. There are three different price points for each level of, for each, each level of time covered. Um, and we support up to five devices per user. So that includes uh, a phone, laptop, desktop, a home device, whatever it might be, we support that individual and five of their users. We support a wide range of applications, of course, as you would imagine, all Microsoft, Windows-based, Apple devices, Android, um, and then any applications that would reside on those specific devices. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier on, uh, we go through the custom escalation process. So we determine you know, if we're unable to resolve an issue for your partner, how do we engage you as the MSP uh, to go ahead in and, and resolve whatever the issue might be? Um, there's some nice, nice stats here on, on the right-hand side. Um, 80, most calls, 80% of them are answered within the first 60, 60 seconds, and 85% of those will be resolved within the first call to our help desk. Um, the one thing to note is if for, for whatever reason, all of the agents were on the phone when your client called in, uh, they would be prompted to leave a voicemail, they're able to leave a voicemail, and then the team would just call them back and engage. So they're never uh, going without uh, speaking to someone. It might just be that you know the team is very busy, no agent is available, but we'll get to them um, as quickly as we possibly can. Now the delta between that, so whether it's the other 20% or the other 15%, sometimes we run into issues where, again, as I mentioned, the staff is completely on the phone. They're unable to, to answer the phone, you know, within the first 60 seconds. Um, or for example, perhaps the person calls in the issue that they're calling about is quite complex and it might require two or three calls uh, with our team or with um, a higher level, whether it's an L2 or L3 type of engineer on our side to resolve that. So we do the best that we possibly can to resolve um, all the end user issues within the first call. Sometimes we do need to escalate internally just to resolve depending on the problem. The other thing I want to mention is that if you have a client that has both knock and help desk services on the same agreement or the same contract with us, um, our help desk will engage directly with the NOC to resolve the issue. So they will not necessarily reach out to you as the MSP, but they will reach internally to try to resolve it prior to engaging you. So here's a, com a little bit more granular breakdown in terms of the various types of applications supported. Um, of course, all operation system support, which is I think pretty standard across across most platforms, um, hardware and driver support, of course, you know, this is where the knock will come in, of course, if we need further troubleshooting, um, any type of web application support. Um, so from a security standpoint, we can install 
um, antivirus, anti-spam, looking at those types of things. Uh, install any type of software application that's required. Again, as I mentioned, there's some mobile device um, support there as well, whether it's an iPhone, Android, uh, Blackberry, or QNX, um, and then connectivity issues, and then just general support. So say, for example, someone can't log into their computer or their Outlooks, their Outlook isn't working, uh, we'll, of course, you know, work with them to troubleshoot that. So again, you know, one of the big reasons why our partners consider outsourcing to us or have moved over to us are for, um, I think the most obvious reason would be their, their end users need 24 seven support and they don't necessarily want to be up 24 hours a day. You know, people need to be able to take a vacation. They need to be able to have uh, some work life balance. So outsourcing to us um, really enables them to do that, enables them to grow out and grow their business. Again, not their head count. Um, and being able to offer 24 seven support is becoming more and more the norm uh, clients are expecting to be able to reach you, uh, any time of day and also reduces, you know, the cost of ownership. So employing our team, um, engaging them, you know, to support the, the infrastructure is much more cost effective than hiring another body or several bodies to run a 24 seven shop. Um, you're able to save a little bit on travel expenses um, for your employees. Again, you're getting away from that reactiveness and getting into a more proactive service where you can set, you know, specific fees, build in your mar appropriate margin. You know exactly what you're getting. Your client knows exactly what they're paying for. Um, and of course, if they, if you have end users that are in specific verticals and that necessarily isn't your wheelhouse, uh, you can offset to that. So we have some partners who have specialized in uh, manufacturing and that's where, you know, their bread and butter comes from, but they're not the experts. So they offset to us. We have all the policies in place for that. We have others that specialize with pharmaceutical clients. Um, of course, there's a lot more things to consider when we get into the healthcare vertical, as well as finance, e-commerce, uh, and then retail. So how to get started? I'm sure that's that's one of the big questions right now. Um, first and foremost, you know, you can reach out to your sales rep and we can help you. Um, Knox services with our team um, are delivered in bundle in, in conjunction, I should say, with the Barracuda Managed Workplace RMM tool. We deliver our Knox services leveraging your service center, which is the management platform for the RMM tool. Um, you have full access, we have full access, you're able to constantly see what's going on, how the sites are configured. As I mentioned, there's complete transparency there. So they uh, come one and of the same, you can't have one without the other. Uh, that's only for NOC. And then when we discuss um, help desk services, the situation here is a bit more unique. So you don't necessarily need to have an RMM tool to deliver the help desk. Um, you can do it, you know, without one completely. However, uh, I do recommend it. Our team recommends it as well um, so that we can do any work with an active directory. So part of the service desk function or the help desk function is password resets, employee activation, uh, so new hire, employee termination, um, doing some access management, some printer management, um, and then of course troubleshooting shares. So in order for us to be able to do those components, we do need to have access to Active Directory, the easiest way for us to do that is, of course, to use a uh, managed workplace or an RMM tool. So just to quickly high level review some of the pricing, our, our NOC is priced uh, per device per month. It is broken down um, in all L1 and L2 for each category of devices. So we have our servers, virtual servers, workstations, and then our network devices as well. Those are broken down um, even more granularly just so that we can apply the correct management protocols to those specific devices. Um, the help desk is priced per user per month. So it is a named user within that environment. So for example, you would say, you know, John, Mark, and Sally from this MSP are able to call into the NOC. They are paying us for those three users. If for, if for whatever reason, uh, one of those employees were to leave and a new one were to come back or come in and replace them, uh, we could just simply swap that out. Your cost would remain net. There is no minimum or maximum number of users or devices either. So you can put in one, one server if you'd like, you could put in one user, you could put in thousands and thousands of either. Um, the nice thing as well is that you can combine levels of service 
within one specific site. So if you say we're going to go with your onshore or our premium offering, uh, you want a combination of level one and level two devices for the infrastructure. And then you want to have some people being able to call in 24 seven, say, you know, the owner or the C-level executives within your MSP or within your end user, pardon me. And then um, the rest of the staff, you know, call in at a different set hours, we can certainly do that. So we can get quite creative in how we configure uh, the deployments of the contracts. And this is a, uh, just a quick, you know, tidbit from one of our current uh, knock and help desk partners. I've worked with Dan myself. Um, you know, they've brought on ton of partners without necessarily needing to hire another body. So again, this speaks to the value of you as a business owner being able to increase your revenue and increase your margins on projects without necessarily having to hire another body and pay someone a big salary. So it does absolutely offset uh, the cost of one to, to outsource to the other. And, and just another quick one, um, Boring Business, they're a big partner of ours. Uh, they've been using our services for, for quite some time. Uh, they use both in conjunction, the NOC and the Help Desk service. Um, they were a big partner and very affected by um, one of the natural disasters last year. We were able to really step in, help them out, come up with a plan to be able to continue to support their partners. And, you know, through this, we've built a really, really solid foundation. Again, as I've mentioned, you know, we really believe in the, the in partnering with you as an MSP to deliver the service. So things come up, we understand that, let's work together. Let's find a solution so that your clients are supported. Again, you know, we own the infrastructure, that's our responsibility and your responsibility is the business. So in this example, if there's a natural disaster, you know, we want to put a plan in place. How do we manage this? How do we support you as the business owner with your relationship? So it does really become, you know, a very holistic approach. So through this, um, you know, these are sort of our, our internal mantras here at Barracuda. So we really believe in creating service offerings with you um, as an MSP, but also on our side that you can go out and deliver them profitably. And then of course, you know, demonstrating value to your, to your end users. So with this, we can certainly work with you to build out uh, programs, build out agreements um, with, your, with your staff to figure out, you know, what is the best go-to-market plan? How can we help you build out your margin so you're, you know, profitable when delivering this service? So when we do that, we can look at, you know, the sites and the breakdowns quite granularly, figure out which devices belong where, how can we best support them, uh, while, you know, the impact to your business from a cost standpoint, you know, is, is small, smaller and you're able to build out appropriate margins. So, for example, people who are doing this are building it out, um, marking it up, you know, 100% sometimes depending on the uh, type of device or the service being offered. And then, of course, you know, the, probably one of the most important components is how do we demonstrate value? How do we give you the tools to demonstrate value to your end user? So with that, we have a very large database of built-in reports into Manage Workplace, which is the RMM tool that you can generate. Uh, we have our site security assessment in there that shows sort of the status health of your MSP or your, your end users, pardon me. Um, you can give that to them at the start of the project, we implement everything, work with them, you can generate the same report, show them the improvement on a percentage scale, and you can say, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, you know, here are all the things we've done, and this is why you're paying us, and here's why you need to continue paying us, because despite you not seeing us here every day, we're still doing a lot of work for you in the background. So we can generate those reports for you, you have full access to generate those reports as well, uh, whether it's an executive summary, you want to do a QBR with your partner, we can help you um, create those, make sure they look the way you need to, and then of course, go and deliver them. Perfect. You know, uh, we have a lot of partners that are leveraging this service. Um, I think we support approximately 80 to 90 um, MSPs, and then through that, I think there's about 400 end user sites. Uh, that we that we've brought on board in the last few years so it's a very popular service it's a really good service to have again i highly recommend you know taking a deep dive if you want to speak with me 
uh, myself to take something offline about a specific scenario, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. Um, if you want us to get on the call with your end user and we can have this dialogue as a group, we're also happy to do that. Um, so we are here for you, you know, as your partner, as, you know, a confidant to be able to have these discussions and then, of course, put something in place that, move, that works for you. All right. Thank you, Jen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll I had mentioned back at the beginning. Uh, if everyone could just take a quick minute and give us some feedback, that would be excellent. In the meantime, if you have any questions uh, that you have not already typed up, be sure to put them in the questions or chat panels uh, to the right of the webinar screen and we'll get to those right now. I can see that we already have a few in queue, but again, please take a moment to go ahead and answer the poll. Thank you. All right, looks like uh, some questions have already come in. There are some questions on the uh, deck being available, as well as pricing in general. Uh, I can answer both of those right now. Um, in terms of the deck, today's webinar was recorded and is available upon request. Um, and for pricing, uh, in more detail than uh, what was covered here in the show, I just really recommend uh, contacting a sales rep directly. Um, we we like to keep that information um, a little bit more private. But uh, well, we can start going into other questions with you, Jen. Uh, sure. So the first one here is: Can I have knock for only the critical servers at a at a customer site? Yeah, great question. Um, absolutely, you can. So again, you determine which devices we manage for you and for your end users. So if it's only critical servers, that's no problem. Uh, we can certainly do that. We have some MSPs that uh, only want us to manage the servers and then they manage all of the workstations. So it's entirely up to you how we configure the site, which devices you want us to manage for you. Great. Um, here's another question. Uh, can you also help us build up managed service proposals? Uh, is there a template that we could you know, send to our customers? Uh, go ahead and take that one. Yeah, uh, so we do have a sample managed services proposal in our partner portal. So that's available to all um, managed workplace or managed workplace partners. Uh, we can certainly help you, um, you know, work off of that framework um, when, when the time comes if you're building that out. Great. Uh, another one here. Uh, is there any sort of time zone restrictions or client time zones? Yeah, uh, no, there isn't. Um, we operate globally. So we have some MSPs who have clients, you know, all over the world and there's no issues there. Um, the only Caveat, I should say, is if we're going to get into uh, doing global support, uh, that if they're going to use the help desk service, we just put them on 24-7 to make sure that they're, that they're fully covered. Excellent. Um, here's another one. You mentioned your NOC is background check. Do we receive certificates or insurance certificates that we can use as assurance to our prospects and clients? Yeah. Uh, I, I've never seen them given out, been given out um, just readily like that, but if you do need them um, and you want them, I'm absolutely certain that we can facilitate uh, you having the appropriate information for you. Great. Um, can we combine multiple levels of service? Yeah, of course. Um, it, you can absolutely combine um, levels of service. So I, I covered that a bit earlier, but sometimes it gets you know, lost in translation. So you can put some devices on level one, some devices on level two, there's no problem. You can also have some users call in 24 seven and other specific users call in uh, just during business hours. Again, they are named users. So you will determine as the MSP during your onboarding process, 
which users are calling in 24 seven. And then of course, which users are calling in, um, you know, Monday to Friday work state work hours. And then same thing goes for the knock managed devices. You determine which user, which appliances fall within the level one category as well as level two. Great. Uh, and we have time for one more question. Uh, any questions that we didn't get to today? I do want to just take a minute and let everyone know uh, if it was a personal, you know, very specific sort of situation, or if we just simply didn't get to it. All questions have been logged, and we can follow up with you, um, and we'll follow up with you one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, after today's webinar. Um, so our last question here for today is if we have an end user with multiple locations, how would we set that up? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, the, the easiest way for us to set that up is we would set it up uh, per site. So for example, uh, we have a partner right now, they have four or five locations. So each location is set up sort of independently um, uh, of each other. So we would have, you know, the, the end user as a whole, then we would have location one, two, three, or four. They would all be contracted independently as well. So we would do uh, one agreement, you know, for location one, one agreement for location two. And the reason we do this is so that we can be very specific in where our agents are deployed, where the actual hardware is. Again, if we need you to go on site as our partner uh, to replace something, we need to know where to send you. Uh, we don't want to necessarily send you on a wild goose chase. So we do get quite granular when we break things down that way. Um, it, it works very well for our team. And we've done everything from one location to 25 locations for a large organization. So, and I'm sure there are larger deployments, just none that I've been involved with myself personally, uh, but it is, it is possible. Um, for us to just break it down that way. Excellent. Okay, and again, any questions we didn't get to today, we will follow up with directly. Um, and by all means, if this is something that you'd like to speak to um, with Jen in more detail about, um, just let us know. You can contact us through barracudamsp.com. And uh, any last words, Jen? Uh, nope, not from me. Thanks everyone again, you know, for the time this morning, this afternoon, uh, for, for coming to the, you know, the webinar. We really appreciate it. And I hope uh, I get to chat with you guys soon and put some good projects in place. All right. Thank you. Thank you.